All right, got this shot doing a fashion shoot here uh, for the brand The Last Lighter Official. I'll link them below. Uh, most of the shots, I would dare to say all of them except for two here, or we did a few like this, just some action shots, and um, was just shooting really fast with the flash really fast, and uh, the flash kept up most of the time. It was a, a Westcott FJ200, uh, which I really like, actually. Um, there's another photographer's flash on the shoot, but... Um, anyway, so we, we need to clean this up a little bit. Um, not ideal to have all this stuff in there unless you want an environmental shot. But real quick, we'll just duplicate the background layer with a control J. I'm going to keep, I'm not going to do the, the Instagram crop. I'm going to do the original ratio here. Keep that. Because this is more for e-commerce, for a website. Um, I certainly will give them some Instagram crops. But for this one... Right now, I want to just get the crop about where I want it. I'll hit enter. Now, I clicked on the uh, the crop tool, and then I clicked on the picture one time to sort of activate the crop, and then I moved it around. If you don't click on the picture one time, um, it do kind of doesn't do anything, and you get stuck. Just a gotcha there. So next thing I'll do is grab the rectangular marquee tool, come over here, and just... Draw a rectangular around this spot over here. Right click, choose fill, make sure content aware is selected, opacity 100%, hit OK. Wait for it, and it fills it right in for you. It's like magic. And then let's do the top. Right click, fill, 100%, hit OK, and we're done. That's all there is to it. Now, save that, bring it back into Lightroom. Now, what you should look at is on the website that uh, for the company, uh, if they have a white background, black background, whatever, if they have a black background, this is probably fine. If they have a, a bright white background, solid white, pure white, um, these are going to, there's going to be a little square or rectangular here. And that might be fine. Um, I see websites all the time. Uh, where you can see the outline of the photo, right? J.C. Penney, a lot of the major retailers. So it really just depends on what they want. If you wanted to make this bright white, you could use your masking tool and pick background. And Lightroom does a really good job of detecting the background usually, even gets the hair. You don't quite get inside the hair, but I can't fault it for that. I mean, that's a really good job. And some of the tools you can use, maybe I'll bring up those shadows a little bit. We're getting there. And if you look at the histogram up here, if you click on this little hide highlight clipping, I'm showing it now because I've got a little block around it. And it'll start turning red when it's pure white, blown out white. Okay, so I brought the shadows up. Uh, maybe I bring the highlights up. And you can see... It's pretty darn white like that. If I keep going to the right, those areas in red, those are pure blown out white, right? Um, just so you'll know, I, I, I'm i going to turn off the mask. I right clicked on the background over here and I chose white to get a white so I can compare it, right? So I'm going to turn off this clipping mask and it really does look bright white. I don't know if we need to go any further with it, but if we wanted to, we could go back to the mask. Make sure you select it. You can see we have our highlights and shadows up. We could maybe bring the whites up. And now we've got a totally blown out bright white backdrop. And you can't see a thing. Now we've lost any kind of shadows or anything like that. So we've lost all the depth to it, right? I kind of liked it better when we had a little bit of depth to it, right? Bring those whites down. So maybe something like that. But you can see it just depends on what you're trying to do. So I can bring those highlights up and now I don't see any edges. Or, or if I want a little depth to the photo, which I kind of like a little depth in the original, you can leave it like that. So it's completely up to you and your situation and what your client wants. And finally, I will say that if you know that you need to have a blown out bright white backdrop, you need to light uh, in studio for that scenario. And typically that means using a couple lights to illuminate the backdrop and one light on the subject. So it's typically a three light setup. Um, and that will save you a ton of time in post. Uh, in this scenario, we that ne wasn't necessarily a requirement. So we just use one light and the client will be perfectly happy 
with this particular scenario. So that's all there is to it. If you guys enjoy this type of content, please do subscribe. I really appreciate it. And give it a like if you don't mind. Thanks a lot. Thank you.